Uh, Dr. Hassan, it's my pleasure to have you today uh, with us today um, to ask you about certain issues with uh, academic writing. Sure. Professor Hassan is a professor of material science and engineering uh, at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. He has been a program chair for uh, three years. Uh, he has significant com uh, commitments with the Materials Research Society by taking part of various committees, uh, various uh, events. In addition, he is the faculty founder of the uh, Kaus MR student chapter, which is the first MR student chapter in the world outside the United States. <coughs> Professor Asharif has a significant uh, experience, more than 20 years, in research and development in electronic materials and devices in universities, national laboratories, and the industry. He has more than uh, 300 uh, publications in, in technical journals and uh, more than 150 uh, invited and contributed to presentations at international conferences. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sharif. Uh, thank you, thank very you for much. your time. Thank you very much for uh, this nice introduction. And uh, I want to start, first of all, by congratulating you and the Kaust uh, student chapter, MRS student chapter, uh, for putting this together. This is a milestone for the MRS to, to be able to uh, put the first student-led symposium at MRS and to do it from Kaust. Uh, is, is very good. So congratulations on this Thank accomplishment. You. And uh, you know, uh, as as an active member of the MRS, it is certainly my pleasure uh, to uh, have um, uh, supervised this chapter and uh, get, get, got involved in its relationship with the Materials Research Society. Uh, so I understand that this is about academic writing, and uh, I am happy to share some of uh, my experiences uh, uh, with you. Thank you very much. So the first question I'd like to ask you, uh, what are the major do's and don'ts when writing CVs? Yeah, this is of course an extremely uh, important question uh, that every student uh, faces as, as they wrap up their uh, uh, student life and start looking for the next stage in their career. So <clears throat> I would say one of the, uh, the most important things is that uh, to try to prepare a CV uh, that matches the job that you're looking for. You know, often you get trained in one area and you, you may apply uh, you know, to, to different positions. So one thing you want to do is to try uh, to focus on these skills that you have developed that actually match that job. So, so if you're looking uh, uh, you know, for a job that, that requires certain skills, you want to highlight those in, in these CV. So it, 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 you have to be careful of who you are sending your CV to and prepare it accordingly by focusing uh, on these skill sets. Uh, another extremely important thing is that you know that uh, Often employers have hundreds of CVs to go through, so they, they, they don't have a lot of time uh, to examine a 10-page CV, so you have to be concise. So my advice is, is usually uh, to keep it to about two pages long, so, uh, so that uh, people usually will scan it quickly and then will immediately make a decision right there because they have usually a big pile of CVs to go through. Uh, so uh, in, in that, uh, in that uh, uh, category also, what you want to do is that uh, I would uh, put bullets, for example, uh, rather than paragraphs, because if somebody is scanning a CV quickly and you have uh, a minute or two is looking at, if, if you write a lot of paragraphs uh, style with a lot of text, they're going to miss a lot of important information. So you need to uh, be creative in using, uh, not, not overdo it, but, but s s such that you highlight the key things uh, that you think are important by using bullets, by underlining, by using... Uh, you know, formatting, so that, that somebody who scans quickly, it's comfortable for the eye, but yet they catch the key point uh, of, of, uh, of your scene. Uh, another thing I would recommend is that, you know, uh, often we do a lot of things. Uh, uh, you want to prioritize the, the important things first. So, for example, uh, you know, talking about hobbies and things, you, usually this is either leave out if you don't have room on the two-page CV, uh, focus on the important information first. So hopefully your publications, your patents uh, should show up first on the first page. You know, so, so the more important information, and you know that for your case, it's different for everybody, should really uh, go first, okay? Uh, another uh, important item for writing an effective CV is to actually focus on what I call power words, okay? Action words, uh, you know, words that, that show that you take initiative. For example, you know, developed, uh, demonstrated, initiated. Late. Uh, th these words that project confidence and, and, uh, and show the, uh, the employer uh, that you have been, you know, a self starter, somebody who takes initiative, okay? Uh, I would also, see, uh, you know, focus on quantitative measures. Again, 
if you try, if, if you, for, for example, uh, have a good publication, you want to you know, maybe bold or highlight this number. You know, so this is something that people appreciate. If you have a patent, uh, you know, if you have international uh, you know, uh, travels and, and working internationally, like things like this, and how, how many places you want these names, like if you want to attend a good university, you want to, to highlight that. So this is, uh, you know, there's, there are many other things, but in my opinion, these, these are the key things. You know, match this CV for the audience, uh, be concise, uh, use bulleting, bullet format, prioritize the important information first, uh, power words, uh, quantitative measures. Uh, this is this is our uh, the measure do's. Of course, mm -hmm. there are uh, measure don'ts as well, and uh, these uh, th th there's a few of them, and, and some of them uh, I think the key that sometimes I see in CPs, uh, you want to avoid uh, uh, talking about negative things, negative experiences in in uh, in your. Uh, studies, you want uh, to avoid providing information that be, may be used in a discriminatory way against you. So you, know, you, want, you don't want to, to highlight these things. Uh, also, it is not advised to talk about salaries or salary information. Leave this to a later stage of, uh, of the job search process. So if you are offered a job, uh, I would uh, you know, not bring this up on a CV and not expecting this, or I was making this. This is something that uh, better uh, be left out. Also, some people put a photo on, the, on their CV. I, I personally prefer that you do not uh, put a photo on your CV. Uh, and then uh, another rule, you know, so we always talk about academic honesty. Same thing on the CV. Do not lie. Because employers and uh, universities, they have a way of finding out if you try to put untruthful information. First of all, it's not ethical, and second of all, if you get caught, it, it could potentially destroy uh, the job that you have been uh, dreaming of. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, some of the do's and don'ts that are about the same. So, Professor Sharif, uh, what are the uh, advice you give to people in, in terms of presenting their work in international conferences and defenses? You mean oral presentations? Oral presentations, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, this is also another important topic, and uh, uh, one of the key things uh, that, that I, I, would, uh, I would like to highlight about giving presentations uh, is that you, uh, just like the CV, you should take the, the, this presentation very seriously, actually. Actually, maybe uh, more seriously, in the sense that you're going to be in front of the audience. So the, the presentation, when you prepare it, you have to think that this is going to be a reflection on you personally, and also on, on, on the work that, that you are preparing. Uh, so if you don't take it seriously, th th then it can actually give a bad impression about you or about the, the work that you are doing. So what does that entail? What, what does that mean? So the first rule of thumb I tell my students is that you have to prepare, prepare, and prepare. It means you have to uh, uh, prepare vigorously for this presentation. Uh, and you have to uh, write notes down, and then if you, uh, for example, like to use a presenter view in PowerPoint, you can look at these notes as you are doing uh, your presentation. So effective preparation is, is, is one of the most important uh, parameters for giving a, a good presentation. If you don't prepare, you, you, the people will immediately tell, and you will not have a coherent message, and, and, and your presentation will, will not be uh, really well, well given, and that's going to reflect on you and on your work. So in fact, you could you could uh, have an excellent results and by giving a poorly prepared presentation, make it lose its value. So preparation is, is, is basically uh, n number one. Number two is that in addition to preparation, I would recommend that you practice in front of an audience, not just in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, you all work in groups. Uh, you have teammates, classmates, help each other out. So you could arrange with them that, okay, whenever you have an upcoming talk, prepare it and then uh, usually give it in an audience because you have people of different backgrounds, different perspective, they can give you a spectrum of, uh, you know, of feedbacks that uh, almost certainly will help you improve your presentation. They can point out errors, they can tell you space through, this is not figure, it's difficult to understand. So this is uh, absolutely uh, very important. And also uh, one of the other things is that it's important, for example, uh, that you make eye contact with the audience and move around. You know. Uh, for, uh, sometimes I see people giving a presentation. That, you know, maybe because of linguistic limitations, they would read from a paper. You know, they'd be holding something, reading it, and, or they'll be always looking at their computer screen throughout the presentation. This is not good. I think if you want, uh, you want to engage the audience, you should make eye contact with them. 
If, if you have a mobile microphone, move around, uh, don't stick around, you know, move around in front of the audience, kind of vary your movement. I think this also uh, is good. Uh, you also need to go slow. Uh, there's no need to speed up. Uh, you know, of course, you have to use stay on time, but but you know, don't don't rush the way you talk and, and the way you say things. You should be relaxed. And I must point out that this relaxation can come from effective pre preparation. If you have prepared effectively and you know exactly on each slide and what you're going to say for each slide, uh, you will, I think, naturally become relaxed. And if you become relaxed, you can do all, uh, all of these things. Uh, another uh, very important thing when you now come to the slides themselves is that I think your slides uh, should not be crowded, uh, should have a uniform font throughout the presentation. They should be simple and should be to the point. Uh, a rule of thumb I tell my students is that uh, when you make a, a slide uh, and, and uh, you know you have a presentation and, and you know you, what some, you, you drop one slide on the floor somebody comes picks it up they should look at it and, and completely mm -hmm. understand everything without having to call you mm -hmm. so that means the slide itself should be self-contained give the main message give the data and give the, the take-home message the, the, the conclusion so so if you prepare a slide each slide like this that means if I lose it and somebody find it they will know exactly what I'm talking about this is a good litmus test for really having an effective slide and a collection of slides that would result in an effective presentation. Uh, some of the don'ts are obviously do not rush. You know, put a lot of slides so you can, you, everybody loves their work and they want to show everything they have done. But the reality is that when you get a 12 minute talk, you cannot show everything. So you have to uh, basically focus on the big picture, on the important slides. Don't uh, jam a lot of slides into the time period that you have been given and rush through them. This is something I, I would not do. Also, do not drown the audience with, with slides that have 10 figures each, uh, small fonts, and a lot of text on them that if people see this data for the first time, they cannot possibly <clears throat> you know, absorb uh, you know, 10 figures or four figures. And you need to have very simple slides, very nice title, and a take-home message on every slide. Uh, and, and related to this rushing and the number of slides, you, know, you have to respect the time that you're giving. Often in these sessions, we have many people who have traveled from across the globe to have their time, don't step on it. So basically, you have to have a respect for, for the people's time. <coughs> and and, and uh, uh, a combination, this is really uh, most important. If I, if I have to, to, to pick two things, that, you know, effective preparation and practice, along with uh, slides that, that pass this litmus test, that somebody finds it in, in a hallway on the floor, picks this slide, out of your presentation, they should know exactly what it's talking about without having to go in. Thank you very much for the insights on this uh, topic. Okay. I think we can uh, also, we should talk about <coughs> posters because mm -hmm. this is also uh, related to the, to the presentation. You know, uh, posters are in a way uh, similar to the presentation, but they are also different in the sense, you know, that, that, that they are bigger and they usually they, they contain uh, a lot of information. So some of the key things about posters that uh, to have a uh, very concise title, brief. You don't need three lines of a title. You know, it really mm -hmm. should be short and catchy. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to have it short and catchy because we are dealing with technical issues, but you need to invest the time and consult with your friends to make it nice uh, and catchy. Also, you should try to use a uh, reasonable color combination. You could do that if, if some people have an eye for this thing, but, but you could also look at previous uh, you know, posters, you know, uh, do, do not use a lot of yellow, for example, that's hard to see, or mixed colors that don't go together, uh, and have 15 different colors in the, in the, in the, in the poster. This is just uh, repulsive. So you can look at previous example and, and you know, calm colors uh, nice, that, that match nicely, go together. Uh, uh, similarly, you should not have it very cluttered. You know, so you, you should not try to jam a lot of data in it. Uh, you should use appropriate font. And a good rule of thumb uh, uh, here is that uh, from 10 feet away, this, the, the poster should be, the title should be visible. And, and, uh, uh, and if you use that rule of thumb, then, then you know, uh, the, the poster is probably in, in decent shape. Another thing I would say is that uh, the number of words, the total number of words in the poster also should be limited. If you, so the poster itself is made of individual slides. So a rule of thumb is a few hundred words probably for the whole poster, you know, 500, 800. I would not exceed that. You should have, a, you know, a nice conclusions. Uh, actually, for the presentation and the poster, it's always nice to tie up the work with a conclusion slide because often people may lose sight of the fact. So I always insist that this conclusion section in the poster 
and in the presentation uh, with my students. And that's it. So uh, uh, finally, in closing, I just want to wish you guys a successful symposium and okay. reiterate what I said in the beginning. I, I'm very proud of you uh, for putting this first student-led symposium at MRS, and, and I'm proud that the CAUS student chapter have done that. And thank you very much. Thank you very much.